Here's today's message with Reverend Tom Okello. Hebrews chapter number 10. Richard had done a marvelous job uh, last week uh, with media and communicated some uh, messages. I don't know how many people uh, uh, got to see it. It's beautiful. Amen. He's doing a marvelous, marvelous job. And so he wants each and every one of us to do our parts in communicating uh, the, 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 same, the same message and let us do the work of God to bring in the harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. To bring in the harvest. I was listening to uh, my own message and was being blessed. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was listening to my own message and I was being blessed. There's something funny, uh, not really funny. When I listen to my own voice, I, list, I hear the voice of my brother who is no longer there, the one I follow. Yeah? Speak exactly like him. And I say, wow, God is amazing. Amen? <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful thing. And so sometimes you are communicating what is coming like directly uh, from the throne of grace. You need to sit back and then also be blessed. Amen? You need to, you need to sit back and uh, just, just, just be blessed and let the Lord uh, pray, be praised and glorified. Are we in the book of Hebrews, chapter number uh, 10? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hebrews, chapter number 10. And the Bible says, verse number 19, Hebrews 10, and verse number 19. It says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By what? By the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil. That is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. Amen. Somebody say, let us draw near. Let, say it like you mean it. Let us draw near. Hallelujah. Let me read from where I started again. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water. Amen? Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Bless the name of the Lord. There is an entrance that God gives us as children of God, as believers. Amen? I said there is an entrance that God gives you and gives me because we believe in him. We are his children. We have made up our minds that we are going to live for him, that we are going to walk and work with him, and that we are going to serve him in every way. Amen? Bless the name of the Lord. It is an entrance. And so as it is an entrance, the Lord wants us to have boldness. Somebody say boldness. Amen? The Lord wants us to have boldness. Boldness here is required because even in the natural, when something belongs to you, and you know where it is. And you are going for it. Sometimes you get obstacles. You come against barriers, delays. And even people who want to take away from you, steal from you. And yet you know in your Noah that that particular thing belongs to you. Amen? You know it belongs to you. And so when you know it belongs to you and you are not bold to go for it because it is in your name. Somebody else can lay claim on it. Amen? Somebody else can lay claim on it. And here, what the Bible is saying is this entrance is like 
an opening for individuals to see, but also an opening for the whole body of Christ to see. Amen? It is good for one, it is good for the body of Christ. And so it is good for one in the sense that you and I have got to be fully persuaded it is what we require. Amen? Every individual has got to be fully persuaded that it is what we require. There is a new and living way. There is an entrance that has been given unto us. The Bible says, amen, that Jesus himself has consecrated it for us through the veil. Hallelujah. Amen. That is his flesh. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities, the Bible says. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen? By his stripes, we are healed. To me, it is like if Jesus had not gone through what he went through, there would have been that perpetual veil. You agree with me? That perpetual darkness, a blockage that nobody could really penetrate. It could not have been maneuvered or manipulated in any way. But this is what he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And the Bible says us here, we have an high priest over the house of God. Mm -hmm. We have an high priest over the house of God. How many prayerful people here or praying people? Let me just not say prayerful. How many praying people are here? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. Amen? I, I, let me say again. How many praying people are here? Even if you say the grace. Huh? Bless, because if I say prayerful, that is another level. Okay? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. We have a high priest over the house of God. That gives you and me some confidence. Amen? Because the confidence that we are de deriving from this, what we are saying here, is in our relationship with the Lord. Are we together here? It is in our relationship with the Lord. This relationship is so good, so good, so, so good, that the moment we enter into, we are exposed to a vast, vast amount of benefits that would not have been there on the other side of the wall. Amen? And so for the praying people, Every time you hear the word priesthood or a priest, you know prayer is involved. Amen? There is no priesthood without prayer. And if anybody would say or declare themselves a priest and they are not praying, then you've got to tell them, sir, <laughs> I think you're in the wrong place. Amen? So why praying? Because God has ordained that through prayer we communicate with him. Amen? We get to him and we receive from him. We talk to him and we hear back. And so where there is no communication in prayer, we are going to be like people we, we, who are not different from anybody. And so God, in his wisdom, has a high priest over the house of God. When we stand here to pray, when we stood there to pray for Kenya, Jesus was involved. Amen? Amen? Every time you come and you, you kneel down, you, you know, whatsoever position you take, and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is involved. Hallelujah. And so when we pray and we don't see whatsoever we are praying for, we should not think that maybe God has not heard. No, no, no. We say, Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, we have a high priest over the house of God. And we have heard this here, that we are this mobile house. Okay? Seriously. <laughs> we are this mobile, mobile house. The Bible makes us to know that this body here is the temple of God. Amen? That anywhere, anywhere, you are going to pray. Amen? You are praying from the temple. Did you know that there's free parking within the vicinity of GM Glory UK Church? Yes, free parking. We all know that parking itself within London has become a problem. So why not join us for worship this Sunday? Breakthrough service at 1.30pm. Address 109A Bramshot Avenue, 
Charlton SE7 7HX. Call 028 858 2628. That's 028 858 2628. Mobile 07868 782 534. The number again 078 68 78 25 34 and don't forget to invite a friend and now back to our today's message with reverend tom okello you are very very powerful as a believer somebody say i'm powerful god is with me say that again i am powerful god is with me say it another time i am powerful god is with me so if, if we are going to be too nice for our God, for our good, what is available for us is, not, is never going to get to us. Are we together here? Let me say that again. If we are going to be too nice for our own good, what is available for us is never going to be seen or experienced and used by us. And so when you are saying you are powerful, you better mean it. Amen? Amen? It has to work for you. Hallelujah. It has to work for you. Imagine if I told my wife, you know, before we got married, I love you, want to get married. But I was not serious. I, I, oh, and then she got very, very serious and I said, no, I didn't mean it. What would have happened? Amen? What would have happened? So I said it knowing in my heart I meant it. It had to take us somewhere. And so many times we say things for the sake of saying. Amen? We say for the sake, it ought not to be so. What you are saying is what you want to be heard in the atmosphere. Bless the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of Jesus. Hey, we have a high priest over the house of God. And so he says here, with that assurance, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Hallelujah. Let us draw near. It is an invitation. Amen. Let us draw near. Let us draw. There are so many let us in the Bible. And I feel like the moment I get to that sentence, let us Truly, God, by his spirit, has cleared the way. Amen? He has cleared the way. You know that the word of God is quick and powerful. Amen? It's sharper than a double-edged a double sword. So that when it's he getting into my ears, it's not only getting to, into my ears for it to be processed later. While Peter was still speaking, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? While he was still speaking the word of God, the Holy Ghost came upon those in the house of Cornelius. And so the entrance of the word of God gives us light and understanding. And so we should have an appetite for it that I am not going to allow anything take my focus away so I miss it. Amen? Oh, you can miss this season sales, whatsoever it is that you wanted to buy, but the season caught up with you and it's no longer... You can miss that. You can get something else later. Life permitting. But there comes a time when God is speaking, when he's speaking and he wants his word to be heard at that particular moment. We can't afford to miss it. Amen? In a world of many, many voices, in a world of confusion, in a world where your attention is required by all sorts of things, we need to filter through the word of God. Are we here? Amen? We need to filter through the word of God and say, this is what he is saying now because that is your safety. That is my safety. That is what separates you from somebody who is just doing their own thing and is not focusing on the Lord. Amen? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Let us draw near with a true heart. Brethren, my heart is with me. Your heart is with you. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. My heart is with me and I go with it everywhere. Your heart is with you and you go with it everywhere. Hallelujah. Such that when I am not being truthful, I don't guess. I know. Are we together here? I don't wonder whether <laughs> am I being truthful or not? No, I know. I don't know about you, but I, I, I know when I am not being truthful. He requires truth in the inward man. I know people have judged you. They have concluded on certain things by your actions. Certain things that you have done. Amen? And they have just concluded that so and so is like this. They have given you names. Amen? Am I talking to real people Yeah. All oh, you people are so cool. Nobody ever says anything bad against you or even frames you up. Amen? People say things about you. Sometimes when you just move, make a move. Amen? And so when people see you move and then they begin to imagine things and then conclude that so-and-so is so-and-so. Trust me, do yourself and I will do myself a favor. Let what is in me be true. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says whatsoever is what? True. Whatsoever is pure. Whatsoever is of a good report. Whatsoever has virtue. If there's anything praiseworthy in those things, think about those things. Why? Because it brings peace to you. The peace of God that surpasses man's understanding is going to guard your heart and guard your mind, even in Christ Jesus. Let us draw near with a pure and true heart. Amen? Bless the name of the Lord. Let us draw near. Trust me. There are things that you have to make up your mind on. You say, this is what I've been looking for for a very long time. Now, I can see it and I am being, I'm being invited to get it. What is it that would make a person still want to appear dodgy? Eh? Are we thinking together here? <laughs> what is it that would make a person still appear? You, you, you have waited for it all your life. And you can see it, and you've heard clearly the invitation. Come, draw near with a, a true heart. We say that our hearts go with us wherever we are. Amen? And so God wants a connection here. That I want you, when you get what you get, not to think that it was a mistake or some coincidence. I want you, when you get here, you know that this is the Lord's doing, and it is so marvelous in our eyes. You know, the devil is faking so many things today to take away the minds of the people of God so that their faith is in something else and not in the Word of God. Amen? But when truth from here is drawn to the truth that is already there, there's going to be an explosion. Amen? Amen? I say there is going to be a, an explosion. I mean, we sometimes struggle with friends, long-time friends, you know, short-time friends, and, you know, those who we have known for a very long time, and you wonder sometimes when they do what they do, you get surprised, say, wow, I didn't know this person could do a thing like this. But when truth is inside us, it begins to detect lies that are around. Amen? Ah, yeah. The Lord wants us to be sharp. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they started a sentence. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And as they started a sentence, I said, stop, that's a lie. Eh? I, had not, I had not heard the entire thing. I said, stop, that's a lie. So the person was taken aback. I said, ah, I was so excited over this, but you are telling me it is a lie. But because I trust you and there is a track record, I will take it as a lie. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Amen? And so, and now I allow them to carry on to finish. I say, you, you, do you see now? Do you see now? When I began to explain the thing now to the person, she said, uh-uh. This person was about to con me. <laughs> I said, stop, that's a lie, that's a lie. 
And this person had woken me up out of sleep. Amen? Out of sleep. There are people who put a demand on me, waking me up out of sleep, and they want a word from God. So if I was having a bad dream, I can only give them a bad dream before I wake up. Is somebody with me? What am I saying? The Lord is calling us to draw near. Amen? He's calling us to draw, to draw near. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's carry on. Let's carry on with this. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience. Amen? And our bodies washed. Amen? With the pure water. Our bodies washed with the pure water. There is a work of the Spirit and the work of the Word. Amen? There is the work of the Spirit and the work of the Word. Bless the name of the Lord Guru Mari. Every time you are reading the Word of God with an open heart, open spirit, open mind, you are actually in the shower. Hmm? You are in the shower, being cleansed. Hmm? You are, you are in the shower and you can look at yourself right in the mirror of that word. You are in the shower being cleansed. That's what the word does. Hallelujah. And so the more we are in the word, the more we are being cleansed. Hallelujah. I said the more we are being, the more we are being cleansed. It is pure water, trust me. Amen. It really is pure water. Bless the name of the Lord. And the Bible says here, let us all fast. The confession of our hope without wavering. There's so much meat here. So much food here can last us the entire year. Amen. Hallelujah. There is deliverance in this scripture here. There is freedom here. Praise the name of Jesus. I say there is exaltation here. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us hold fast the confession of of our hope without wavering. He has told us to draw near with a pure heart, clean heart, to get a hold of faith. And as we get a hold of faith, he said, we are to consistently, without moving left or moving right, we are to consistently hold fast Hold tightly our confession. Amen? The confession of our hope without wavering. I heard something very clearly this morning about this. When we are holding fast our confession, it is not so much about speaking it. We can speak it, okay? We're together here. Want us to be, want us to, to, sit, to sit up. We can speak it. It is heard. People hear. We also hear what encourages us about what we are talking about. Amen? But there is an action part to that. There is an action part to that. You have heard older people telling younger people that do as I say, but don't. Not as I. Uh, have you heard that? People who were born in the 90s don't know, they don't know that. Amen? Do as I say, but not as I do. And so they will be telling you to do something that they themselves are not going to do. Amen? And so it gets the younger ones confused. Say, but uh, if this thing was really good, why are you not doing it? Huh? <laughs> If it was that dangerous, why are you doing it? And so for us to hold fast our confession, brethren, we are to know this word. We are to meditate on this word. And let the words that we are meditating upon find legs. So that the steps that we are taking, really it is the word that is guiding us. Amen? Amen? Becomes a lamp, a light to our path. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Isn't that what the Bible says? Amen? Ordered by the Lord. That means the word is ordering our steps. 
That means the life that we are living is according to the word of God. And it brings God delight. Hallelujah. Let us all fast. There are things that sometimes we say, oh, when a person is young and is newly born again, they are on fire for God. Amen? They are on fire for God. And sometimes, you know, we, over time, they cool off. They begin to slack a little bit. Amen? No, we are to hold fast. If a lie was as plain as, as, as anything when we got saved, the lie is still to be as plain 30 years down the line. <laughs> Amen? Am I talking to real people here? Yeah? Amen? Oh, yeah. If, if a foul word was as, 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 as dirty, then when we just got saved, we were on fire for God, a foul word should still be dirty now. 30 years down the line. That is holding fast to our confession. Amen? And so the Lord, according to this word, does not want there to be a gap between what comes out of our mouth and what we actually do. That is where we, la we, we lack power and we lose out on power. Amen? When, we, when there is no connection there, sometimes we are wondering, God, but I've said this. There are people who have been confessing the word. Trust me. Eh? They have been confessing the word, but they're right there where they have been confessing the word. They have not seen anything change. Amen? So what is the problem? Is the word the problem? No. It is their action, their accompanying action. The word is going that way, and their action is going that way. They never meet. And so when they don't meet, then nothing is going to happen. Amen? Trust me, from here, don't let anybody deceive you. God is more interested in my life, the way I live it, than what I say. Because there are people who can be so smart in articulating words from here. You agree with me? Amen? Oh yeah. You can easily be persuaded and deceived. So smart. And then when you look for them, you don't find them. And you're wondering, ah, this person told me they were going to be here. <laughs> and I say, but they are not here. You're waiting two hours, four hours, five hours, a day, two days. They are not here. There's a man, he's, he's, he's now going to be with the Lord. He, he was so principled. Sometimes when, you know, somebody told him, wait. And you would go wherever you're going. You come back and say, what's happening? He says, so and so told me to wait. So I am waiting. I say, ah, is he coming back? He said, he, he said so. <laughs> He said so that he was coming. Amen? But let us get back to the word of God. This is so good, so good, so good. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is what? Hallelujah. He who promised is faithful. Faithfulness is an attribute of God. Amen? He is faithful. He does not lie. He does what he says. Amen? He perfects, he finishes what he has spoken of. Faithfulness is his attribute. And so, for us to get to realize the faithfulness of God, in many cases, we need to exercise patience. Amen? Oh, did anybody hear that? For us to see the faithfulness of God, in a totality, we need to exercise patience. But I said this some time back. Our world is so tired, our world is worn out. Amen? Our world is completely worn out, tired. Even the soil is tired. That people do not wait. They don't want to wait. Whatsoever they need, they, need it, they want it now. I must have it now. I must have it. And so if you tell them to wait, you are going to get into trouble with them. Amen? So to see faithfulness is connected to patience. And if we lack patience, we are never going to experience the faithfulness of God. We trust this message has been a blessing to you. Romans 10 17 says, So then, faith come by hearing, and hearing by God's word. 
we believe that through faith you will have victory in all areas of your life why don't we pray today pray after me dear Jehovah God I believe in you I confess my past life of sin living for myself and not obeying you God I'm ready to trust you Jesus as my Savior and Lord take up residence there and begin living through me amen Wow through this simple prayer you have begun a new journey join a good Christian church near you or better yet worship with us at GM glory UK every Sunday at 1 30 p.m. address 109 a Bramshot Avenue Charlton London SC 7 7 HX we look forward to welcome you in a vibrant worship a dynamic Word of God and a great family you can call the office on 28 858 2628 that's 028 858 2628 mobile 07868 782 534 the number again 078 68 78 2534 or visit www.gmgloryuk.org until next time god bless you